It has been called a crime of passion. Two wealthy sisters from a small East Tennessee town and a teenage caretaker who helped run errands for those sisters all gunned down at point blank range. Eight decades later, the triple murder remains unsolved. Was the killer motivated by greed, racism or pure hate? Here is 10 News anchor Robin Wilhoy. A body was laying on a stairway of blood, shot through the shoulder and head by a gun. The lyrics recount a murder that shook the small town of Oliver Springs to the core. Her life was now over before it was through. Decades later, the question remains. Who killed sisters Margaret and Ann Richards and Leonard Powder Brown, a 16-year-old who ran errands for them? It's been over 75 years, you know, and people are still reluctant to talk about it. Consumed with the murders she learned about decades after the fact, Danita Ashley ran into silence as she researched and wrote a book. This is Ann, and here, this is Margaret. The Richard sisters were from a prominent wealthy family. Their grandfather built the famed Oliver Springs Hotel. During the late 1800s, it drew people up and down the East Coast. Attorney Joe Van Hook said at the time, Oliver Springs was the Gatlinburg of East Tennessee, and the Richards reaped the rewards. They were lived in a Victorian-style mansion that was on three floors and had 18 rooms. Margaret and Anne were at home mid-morning on February 5th, 1940, planning for a big night in Knoxville. That they were going to the premiere of Gone with the Wind tonight, and they had bought new dresses to go to Gone with the Wind, see? Their younger sister, Mary, a teacher at the nearby elementary school, sent students two different times to make sure the sisters were getting ready for their outing. No one answered the door, so Mary checked for herself. As soon as she opened the door, she saw her sister, Margaret, um, in a pool of blood in front of the staircase and she just immediately turned around and started running, screaming. Neighbors converged on the house. Commotion followed. Anne was shot in the head, Margaret in the head and throat, and powder between the eyes. A gun found near his body automatically made him the prime suspect in a murder-suicide. It wasn't something that a 16-year-old boy that had never fired a gun. He was afraid of guns. It's just, it, it's, not some, it's not something he could have done. As part of the investigation, a coroner's jury considered the evidence. There was no gunpowder residue on the teen, and the bullet's trajectory was not consistent with a self-inflicted wound. Even the, the people that were doing the inquest went and told the sheriff, we don't believe he did it. And the sheriff at, the, at that time said, well, it's my call. Despite the sheriff's call, other suspects and scenarios surfaced. The Richards cousin, Mamie Sinknett, had sued the family the year before for what she thought was her fair share of their wealth. She ended up losing her case. A lot of people think she was actually in the house and pulled the trigger. Then there was a property dispute with the Hanna family, who lived across the street from the Richards. The weapon found near Powder Brown belonged to Gerald Hanna. The, the weapon that was found at the crime scene disappeared. Uh, people were actually passing it around. For decades, Powder Brown remained the prime suspect, until 2001. Then Oliver Springs Police Chief Paul Massingill reopened the case and re-examined the evidence. In a documentary interview, Massingill called the timid teen an innocent scapegoat. You know, the black man didn't have any power. Women really didn't have any power. The white man had all the power. I mean, from my opinion, I know who did it. And uh, I could surely clear Powder's name. And that's what I was able to do. I was able to clear Powder. 1940, the Richards house would have sat on this hillside. 83 years later, the Richards mansion is long gone. Shortly after the murders, the family sold it to the American Legion for one dollar. It burned down in 1947. Across the street from where it stood, the Hannah House still stands, and so does the building that housed Mamie Sinknett's insurance business. The Oliver Springs Cemetery is Margaret and Anne's final resting place. 
they went to the grave, likely knowing who pulled the trigger. But they ended up being buried in their new dresses that they w bought to wear to see Gone with the Wind. And at another cemetery miles away, a marker bearing Leonard Powder Brown's name, placed there more than 60 years after he was buried. A relative of the Richards sisters actually had this put here for him, so. With the message being, we believe you right. have nothing to do with this. Exactly, yeah. On a cold winter day, 1940. It's a story retold in song without an ending, unless. There could be people still alive today that may know who done it, that if they would come forward, but getting them to come forward would be the thing. Right now, you can watch an extended version of the Oliver Springs murder at WBIR.com in the Appalachian Unsolved section of our website.